Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to part 13 of my Ultimate Python 3 tutorial series. In this part of the tutorial, we're going to talk about dictionaries. Okay, so while lists, which we covered in the previous two tutorials, organize data based off of sequential indexes, dictionaries instead use key value pairs. And a key value pair could be something like F name and Derek for myself, this being the key this being the value. And we'll give you some code here just so this makes a little bit more sense. Let's create a dictionary. Well, I'm going to call this Derek Dictionary is equal to, and you use curly brackets when you're working with, di with dictionaries. And I could say something like, this is my key, colon, space, and then this is my value. And then I would separate that with a comma and put another one in there. So I can say, last name, colon, and then my value. There's my name. Comma again, and then another one could be address, and colon, and then here could be my value again. And of course you can use values other than strings. So if you would want to get a value with a key, how you could do that is you could say my name for example, and to get that value, you would just reference your dictionary by name, of course. And then inside of brackets, you would say exactly what you're looking for, which would be my first name. Run it, and you can see it provides that. You're also going to be able to change dictionary values, so they're not permanent, just by referencing whatever the key is that you would like to change. And let's change it to something like 215 North Street. We would also be able to come in and add additional keys as well as values just by referencing their dictionary, saying what we want our new key to be, and then provide a value. We could check if a key exists or not. So we could say, is there a city? The check for whether the thing we just added was properly added or not. And how we do that is we say city in and our dictionary we're working with. See that comes back as true. We could get a list of all of our values as well as our keys. So we'll go like this. And if we want our values, we just type in values. And if we want our keys, we just type in keys. And there you can see. First it prints out our values, then it prints out our keys. You'd also be able to get the key and values. So I'm going to say for key, uh, key and value in reference our dictionary. And items is going to provide both of them at the same time. And then we would be able to come in and list both of them. And there you can see they printed them all out on the screen. We're also going to be able to get a value associated with a key using get. So we could say reference our dictionary followed with get. And let's say we were looking for the middle name because we thought that might be inside of there. Otherwise, we can output on the screen if it wasn't found, not here. And you can see not here came back because we didn't include a middle name. We're also going to be able to delete a key value just by going DEL, referencing our dictionary, and just provide the key, and it's going to get rid of the key and value. We're going to be able to loop through our dictionary keys by just going I in and the dictionary that we have, and we can print those out on the screen here if we would like. And you can see because we deleted the first name that it just prints the last name, address, and city. And we'd also be able to come in and delete all the entries just by going and referencing the dictionary and calling for clear. Now what I want to do is create a list for holding dictionaries. I'm going to call this employees. Then I want to input the first and last name for each of those employees. So I'll say enter employee name and how am I going to go and get both of those and throw those in? Of course I'm going to use split which we've used before. 
which is going to split anywhere there's a space and throw the individual pieces of data into the proper variables. And then I'm going to append that information and I can provide the key here. So I'll say first name and then go F name for that value. Again, last name and the last name provided by our user and then I can print that information. So I'll say print employees and run it. Now there's only going to be one, you know, because that's all I put in there, but if you put it in a function, it could work different. There it is. And then it's going to print out my first and last name, which is stored inside of the dictionary. All right, so with that information, what I want you to do now is try to solve this similar problem. I want you to create an array of customer dictionaries and then your output is basically going to look like this. Enter a customer, Y, then you will enter a customer name and it's going to continue asking over and over again until you finally hit N. Whenever you do hit N, it's going to print out all of the customers that you entered. Alright, so pause your video and give that problem a try. Otherwise, I'm going to solve it for you right now. Alright, so basically anytime we want to loop indefinitely until a break statement is found, what are we going to do? Well, we are going to use while true. But before we get into there, I want to create my list of customers. So that's how we create a list. Then I'm going to say while true, just like I said before. Then I'm going to say create entry, meaning that I'm going to ask the user if they want to enter a new customer or not. So I'm going to say enter customer and I'll say yes or no. Throw a colon inside of there in a space. Now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to cut off anything that they would add in into that. So I'm just going to work with the very first character they type which is going to be a Y or an N. So I'll just go create entry and I will allow them to use either uppercase or lowercase also, which is going to be convenient for our user by making everything into lowercase after I cut off the very first letter. All right, so now that I have that, I can say create entry. If it's equal to no, well then I want to call break and leave the loop altogether. Else, I'm going to say that I want to allow them to enter a new customer. So I'm going to say F name, L name for first name and last name, equal to input, enter, customer name. And then I'm going to split at that point. I can then add the dictionary to our array by saying customers, append, and then F name followed with the first name that they added and then last name again followed by the customer information that they added for last name and that's giving me an error there because I need to put our curly brackets inside of there and that's all that I need to do and now what I want to do is after they are all done using or entering information I'm going to cycle through all the customers that they added and print them out on the screen. And how I can do that is just go customer and reference the first name. And again, customer and reference the key for our last name to print all that out. And if we run it, you're going to see enter customer. I'm going to type yes, enter customer name. I can say Sally Smith. Enter customer, I can go capital Y, I can enter another customer name, and then enter customer, I can say no, and it's going to print out the customer list. Alright, so hopefully you guys got that. If not, don't worry about it. The whole idea here is just to get you to think in new ways and get you to understand the final code. And that's going to be it for this video. In the next part of the tutorial, we're going to cover recursive functions, which are functions that execute themselves. So very spooky stuff. And like always, please leave your questions and comments below.